I often get asked the question of when to use a mode. Once you understand that a mode consists of the same notes as its parent scale and all its related modes, you might wonder then, what makes each mode unique? For example, if C major, D Dorian and G Mixolydian all contain the same seven notes, what makes them different? As we'll learn, it's the backing music that allows us to bring out a mode's unique flavour. In other words, without any musical reference, there's no tone or centre. So playing any mode of the major scale note for note, without accompaniment, will likely just sound like the major scale. Let's put our focus on the second mode of the major scale, Dorian, a mode around which a lot of music is centred. First, we need to get an ear for Dorian's sound. I've uploaded some chord tracks on the lesson page to help with this. As we can see, Dorian consists of the intervals of a minor triad. This means we can use it over minor chords. It also contains a minor seventh, giving us a minor seventh chord. But the interval that gives Dorian its distinctive sound is the major sixth. Hold this note over a minor chord with the same root to get a taste of Dorian. In this example, our root is D, so we're playing D Dorian over D minor. This also means if you hear a movement of minor harmony that touches on this major sixth, there's a strong chance it's in Dorian. As mentioned earlier, Dorian is the second mode of the major scale, which means that D Dorian uses the same notes as the C major scale. In turn, this means you only have to learn one scale pattern, the major scale, and you'll have all its seven modes covered. Dorian's root is always a whole step above the major scale's root. So if you want to play D Dorian, just play C major from its second degree. For E Dorian, play D major. For F sharp Dorian, play E major. However, Many guitarists like to think of Dorian having its own pattern. Really, Dorian's first position pattern is the same as the major scale's second position, since Dorian is the second mode of the major scale. It takes time to fully get your head around this relationship between modes and their parent scale. But the key point here is that to really hear a mode's unique flavour, the backing music must share the same root and if it's a chord, the same chord quality as the mode you're using. So, one of Dorian's functions is like any other scale. It has a related chord type and therefore can be used over instances of that chord. Dorian is especially versatile in that respect. Unlike the natural minor scale, Dorian sounds good over unusual or non-diatonic minor chord changes. For example, take this movement between A flat minor and B minor. We could play A flat Dorian over A flat minor and B Dorian over B minor. Dorian also works nicely over a minor 4 chord. For example, let's say our key was C major. Our tonic chord would be C major, and the minor 4 chord would be F minor. I'm using an A string Dorian pattern here, so we can play both C major and F Dorian conveniently in the same position. The C major scale would be a natural choice over C major, but changing to F Dorian would really complement that F minor chord. Let's take a listen.
as we know, Dorian also has a modal function. That is, it works over certain sequences of related chords that we might call Dorian chord progressions. These are progressions centered around Dorian's related chord. Since Dorian is the second mode of the major scale, we're listening out for progressions or movements that gravitate around the two chord. Probably the most common Dorian based movement is between two and five. In C major, that would be D minor and G major. D Dorian and therefore C major would work over both these chords. You'll hear that movement being used in countless songs and film scores in different keys. For example, listen to the main part of Great Gig in the Sky by Pink Floyd for a powerful use of Dorian 2-5. In fact, it seems Pink Floyd thrived on the Dorian mode. Listen to songs like Breathe and Another Brick in the Wall for more Dorian magic. Being able to recognise these movements will help you determine when to use Dorian and therefore where to position your scale pattern. Sometimes that 2-5 movement will be extended in the following way, 2-1-5. An example of this can be heard on Alice in Chains' Down in a Hole. Another common Dorian centred movement is as follows. You can find extended backing tracks and more examples of Dorian progressions on the lesson page. Notice how all these progressions resolve around the two chord of the major scale, making Dorian the modal center. Now it could be argued that all these progressions are simply in C major, as this is the key signature. But while this is true, as far as the notes we are using, by thinking in modal terms we can build our melodies and harmonies more consciously around the actual key center, as opposed to the theoretical key signature. If you're unsure of this difference between key center and key signature, don't worry about that for now. Your ears are the most important tool in identifying a key and given mode. Finally, be aware that most songwriters and composers do not intentionally write a song in a given mode. It just happens because it sounds natural to them. So don't set out to write songs in specific modes as this will limit where you can go. Rather, learn to recognise when these movements occur in music so you can jump to the right place on the fretboard and accompany them with purpose. Visit the lesson page for backing tracks and more supplemental content. Cheers. Mm -hmm.